today for you, I have the top 10 Bernina embroidery questions. We're going to go through the questions I always get asked in my classes and online and all of our social media. Hi, I'm Sarah from SewingMastery.com, where we do videos on all different kinds of machines, embroidery machines, sewing machines, sergers in the Bernina, Husqvarna Viking, Fop and Singer brand. So check out our website. We've got over uh, 4,000 videos that you can see. So we get these questions all the time. So with the popularity of our top 10 Bernina sewing machine question list that we just did, and we'll link to that below in the description so you can check out that video as well, I decided to go ahead and list out what our top 10 embroidery questions are and kind of go through them. Now, if you're not a Bernina user, you're going to find that a good amount of these questions will be answers that you'll be able to use on your embroidery machine. So I've been working through a project. I'm actually doing a whole bunch of placemats that I'm embroidering on. And I'm thinking through all the steps that I've needed to do and know about my machine, my fabric, my stabilizer, my needles that led up to me, me being able to sit down and embroider those out. So that project is coming. I can't wait to show you all the steps that we have for uh, embroidering on things that are hard to hoop. So by taking time to go through these questions will really help you no matter what level of embroiderer you are. So if you're a new Bernina embroiderer or you've been using your machine for many years, I hope you'll get some good ideas of whether you're doing things correctly or maybe you can up your game and do things a little better. Okay, so Bernina people, this is the first one's your exact question. You always ask, which embroidery format is right for my Bernina machine. I always see that ART, which is a Bernina format, is what people think that they need for their machine. But tell you the truth, the format you need to download to your USB stick is either EXP or DST. So those formats are available from every embroidery company. That's like the standard, generic. It's the stitch information you need for your embroidery machine to move that hoop and stitch that design. So either one of those formats works for you and those will be the ones you wanna download. So with that out of the way, I do wanna note that one of our later questions is for those of you working with a Mac computer and transferring designs to that USB stick. So make sure you watch to the end because we got great tips along the way. The second most commonly asked question is, what do I do when I see my bob and thread coming to the top of my fabric? So what are you actually seeing? So first off, when you go to your embroidery part of your machine, your tension or with the computerized machines automatically drops to a lower number. So, but you are usually using a lighter weight thread in your bobbin and a little heavier thread in your needle. So the goal is that your bobbin thread pulls the top thread to the back side and you should see some of that top color on the back of your hoop or back of your fabric. So if you are not seeing that and you are seeing some of that bobbin thread coming up top, just stop your machine. All you need to do is take and reduce, smaller number, reduce your top tension down a, a bit. So usually like if it's at two and a half right now, start by moving it to two. If it helps, but you still see a little of that bobbin thread, don't be afraid to bring it down to say one and three quarters or down to one and a half. Once you see that bobbin thread disappear, it doesn't matter what that number actually is. The key is that you're balancing that the bobbin is now tighter than the top and will pull those stitches to the back and make it look nice and smooth and round on the top. So why does that happen in the first place? So over time, as your embroidery machine moves and vibrates, things loosen up. And as they loosen up, that's when you have to kind of start to adjust for it. So if you're finding you're always having to lower your top tension, it's probably just time to go ahead and have your machine serviced and your service technician will get everything kind of tightened back up and back to its right place to start and then you can start embroidery. But over time, like I said, things will loosen up and you might need to adjust that bobbin thread.
Now, if you really can't get things totally set, I have been known to match my bobbin thread to my top thread, and then it's not as noticeable. Next question, why is my embroidery not completely lined up? So like you're embroidering, and then now it's embroidering like a half inch away or an inch away. One of two things happens. The most important thing first is to always have your embroidery machine. It's a computer plugged into a battery backup. Now this is not just a surge protector and it sure beats plugging it into the wall outlet. You really can't get nice consistent power that's needed for this machine to stay constantly running at its optimum level. If the machine sees any dip or spike of electricity, it's going to shift your design and it will, well, then it won't work. It just doesn't look good at the end. You, you're finding the details, the eyes, the ears are kind of offset and you're gonna have to start over. It is no fun. If you're embroidering in the warmer months of your area, you will find that having that battery backup will save you um, frustration, power issues, especially as your air conditioner kicks on and off in your home. Plugging into a battery backup will also help with your circuit boards. They'll just keep them safe and humming along for a lifetime. I've often had people ask me, why doesn't my embroidery machine start? They're pushing the start button and nothing is going. Or you're getting some messages like put on the hoop and you're like, I have put on the hoop. So here's the thing with a Bernina embroidery machine. It's designed to have you do things in a specific order. If you kind of jump the gun, put the hoop on before it is expecting it, it's gonna want you to take it off so it can calibrate and then it will tell you exactly <laughs> when to put the hoop on. So don't get frustrated, you just need to start to do things in the order that it needs to be done, done in. The other thing is, is if you have not selected your Bernina foot number 26, the embroidery foot, your machine will not stitch yet. So make sure you have selected the machine's foot, uh, especially if the last thing you were doing was regular sewing, that foot's still selected. You gotta tell the machine that you have switched over to that foot. Speaking of switching over, make sure that if you are using a straight stitch throat plate or you have one, put it on. You're just gonna get a nice, better result with your embroidery. And don't forget, you're gonna need a fresh embroidery needle. It just saves you so much frustration by starting with a new New needle. So before I go on, you do see this cute little quilt. This is our Embroidery Essentials online course. This is a course that I teach that really helps you master your machine. So like what we were just talking about, like learning the order you do things with this particular project, it's not about the project, it's about the repetition of doing all the steps and all the blocks and three additional projects that you find yourself becoming in tune with the machine. It will take you from zero to hero of using your machine. So if you two have not become best friends, maybe you're still a little scared of your Bernina and Borgia machine, this course could be your answer. Again, we'll put links below this YouTube video where you can check it out and see if it's right for you. Join us and over a thousand other students that we have in this course that have mastered their machine. Plus, you have access to me and I can answer all your embroidery questions at any time that they come up. This course is actually over five and a half hours long and you get to keep it for life. So at any time you can come back, refresh, relearn, and if you get a new embroidery machine, take it again and learn all those great functions that are on the new machine. So this next question is about centering a design. Now that sounds pretty simple, but it's a very common question with the Bernina machines. So doing something like this, an Embroidery Essentials online course, will help you actually do that centering uh, 16 times so you know exactly where it's gonna stitch. So it's pretty key that you start where you think you're gonna start, and the design is exactly where you want it to be. So there is a video, we'll put links below, of how to find the center of your embroidery hoop, and if a design needs to start at a certain location on your fabric, how to get your needle to move to that exact spot. So this next question is about a thread stand. So people ask, do I really need a thread stand? So this is one that would just sit beside your embroidery machine. But on this particular model of Bernina, there is a thread stand actually built in to the side. So that says that it's pretty important to use a thread stamp, and here's why. Number one, when you put your spool of thread on here, you don't have to actually put a spool cap on, so that's gonna save you a lot of time. 
Next, as the thread has time to relax, as it goes up to the guide and then it travels over to the first part of your machine, it has time to relax. This can help for metallic threads or if you're sewing with clear threads, that will help that. And you notice how fast your embroidery machine is running? You will notice that the thread, as it's whipping off that spool and coming up here, it has time to kind of like unkink a little bit. So I am a fan of thread stands. It can save you a lot of headaches. So if you ever have thread that are kind of getting um, caught at the spool or on your spool caps, switch to a thread stand. It is totally worth it. I'm a fan of hoop springs. So on the Bernina hoops that come with your machine, you're gonna notice that when you go to hoop fabric and stabilizer together, it's almost like you need a third hand. You need a little spring that helps hold open the bracket and allows you to easily get your fabric in. This is a hoop spring that I highly recommend. There's like five in a pack, so you can put them in all the hoops that come with your machine. And again, we'll put links below where you can find more information and the blog post and video I wrote about putting in a hoop spring and how it's gonna also save you a lot of time. Needles, needles are something everybody always asks about. Do I need an embroidery needle? Well, that's what it was made for. So an embroidery needle is sharper and will definitely be the right needle. Also has a little taller eye in there. So as that thread's going through for thousands and thousands of stitches, there's room for it. As you're working on things like um, some thicker fabrics or you're in the hoop projects that have multiple layers, you're gonna notice that that is something that is so key for really getting a quality stitch is having a bigger needle for thicker fabrics and a slightly smaller needle for the thinner fabrics. I'm a fan of a size 9014 embroidery needle. I have two more questions that are always asked of me. Plus I have a comment I hear a lot of times in my class. So first off, for those of you who are working with a Mac computer and your Bernina machine, I've got a little something for you. If you're a PC or a Windows person, just ignore this particular part. So a lot of people are using Mac computers. I use them myself. And when you put a design from a Mac computer to a USB stick, you're gonna notice that there's some extra lines that come up when you open it on the screen. And it's nothing wrong with your machine, and there's nothing wrong with your computer or your USB stick. Just happens that this machine can recognize an extra file that the Mac computer puts on that USB stick. So here's how it's gonna go. If you have 10 files that you have put on that stick to embroider, the first 10 are going to come up and look not like an embroidery design. You need to get and scroll through till you get to the 11th design, and then those will be your embroidery designs. 11 through 20 will be the ones you're looking for. So just know that they're always the second half of those files, and the first half you just ignore, and just go ahead and scroll down until you start to see your embroidery designs on your USB stick. Now this last question is something that I actually get a little excited about, because people do ask about sizing designs in the machine. So Bernina is one of the only brands that allows you that when you bring a design in and if you want it to be a 400% bigger, if it still fits in your hoop, you can go ahead and enlarge it 400% and it will add the stitches in it. Again, why am I so excited? Because most brands of embroidery machines only let you actually go up 20% larger or 20% smaller. And they don't actually add or subtract stitches. That's why they limit you at 20%. On a Bernina, if you're looking at the stitches, if it's got a thousand stitches, you can go up to 4,000 stitches, 8,000 stitches. And you also notice that it'll take that much longer for the design to stitch. So you know that it's adding the stitches in and vice versa, it will reduce stitches if you're making that design smaller. It will take less time to stitch because there's less stitches. That is something that they have built into embroidery machines from day one. And it's something that I love to show my students because they don't have to have extra software to make it fit. So if they just need it a little longer, a little taller, you can just go ahead and size it up or size it lengthwise or taller or proportioned and you will have the stitch count come out absolutely perfect. So those are the 10 most common questions that we get. But this last little one I wanted to add in because it's a comment I hear a lot. Number one, if I'm at a class and I notice somebody reaching down 
and trying to thread the needle manually. I'm like, why aren't you using your needle threader? And I get this more often than I think I should, is people like, oh, well, I just never figured it out, or it just doesn't work anymore, or they just don't know how it works. So they're just there re-threading that needle every time a color change comes up. And that gets old. Even for me, I can still see that eye of the needle, but eventually that just takes a lot of time. My advice to you is actually figure out how that needle threader works. If it's not working, have your local service person uh, put a new needle threader on or adjust it so it does work and then have them show you how it is supposed to work. We have videos on how a needle threader is supposed to work, so check those out and just get take the time to do it so you're not struggling re-threading that machine and having to thread that needle every single time. On a side note, you can find a handheld needle threader that you could add to your uh, accessory box and that would at least help you if you're at a point where you just can't get your machine in to be serviced. It will allow you to easily push that thread through the whole of that eye without you having to squint and push it through yourself. So if any of these tips have been helpful for you, please give us a thumbs up on this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and put in the comments which tip was the most helpful for you. And check out our Embroidery Essentials online course, and I hope, maybe, I'll see you in class soon.